58, The Demon Headmaster. top of the class to know who this is but can you remember how it all began i don't get it i really do not get it perhaps you need reminding the prefects are the voice of the headmaster i will not endure disorder he's power man. perhaps you'd better watch out look at me for the demon headmaster wednesday at 4 35 on children's bbc one Hello, and welcome to episode 68 of Two Geeks, Two Beers, with me, Morgan, and look into his eyes. No, no, not there. Down a bit, down a bit. There he is. It's Tom. Hello. That's a joke I would only make when we're miles apart and Tom can't hit me. Um, <laughs> so in this edition, uh, we're heading back to the 90s with a splat as we fall back under the spell of the demon headmaster. Uh, mm. investigating the vintage CBBC series, the recent reboot, and the books that inspired them both. Tom, straight down to business. Mm. What do you know? <laughs> what are your memories of The Demon Headmaster? Um, it's one of those shows which, you know, it was on during my peak, as is, as same with you, childhood era, you know, when you'd come home from school. So, peak, peak, peak childhood era, yeah. Yeah, Th three o'clock uh half three maybe um cbbc was it cbbc it was cbbc yeah it was just one of the the main attractions of the week like a proper a proper like serial drama event television yeah like one of the more important shows of the week and um i don't remember much about it. it's one of those shows where i bet if i watch it now it will instantly come flooding back but obviously the bloke i can't remember his name the bloke who played the demon headmaster Looks like a what villainous Nick Hewer off Countdown and Apprentice. Oh, I always thought I always thought Jack Straw. Mm. I always thought it was like That's a even closer, dead ringer yeah. for Jack Straw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, and I just remember it being really scary. I remember it, so he was not much about the plot, but yeah, these um, computer geek whiz kids taking down the 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 man um, and all this. Uh, but yeah, I can't remember much about it other than that I enjoyed it at the time. Well, hopefully you'll enjoy this uh, revisitation of the show. And actually, I, I really enjoyed researching this episode. I sort of going back and watching the old clips and stuff. I, I, I got like, like excitement in my tummy. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how else to describe it. It, sort of, it really um, transported me back to a time when I was uh, a big, big fan of the Demon Headmaster. And I remain a big, big fan of, of it. But actually, the way I got into it was not initially through the TV show. It was through the books. Oh. So... So I don't know if you had anything like this when you were at school uh, during your peak childhood, but um, we 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 had a, we had a thing where and I, I it was some kind of like book club, um, and and all the all the students got handed out like a pamphlet, and uh, you you would mark an X next to the books you wanted or a little tick, and the school then did something. I can't remember. It was far too long ago. I can't remember exactly what happened, but either the school did something or, or you posted off the pamphlet with some cash or whatever. But anyway, you got sent back uh, th these books that you had ordered. Mm. And and uh, this system uh, that, that was operating at the time, that helped fuel some of my geeky passions. I do. This does ring a bell. It does ring a bell. This Yeah, having a little thing that you would pick your, your favourite. Yeah, that was really great. I feel, yeah, well, it's great. What, does it still happen? And if not, why not? I'm going to yeah. assume it doesn't, so that I can say that everything's terrible nowadays and, and kids these days don't read enough. And, but I think, but yeah. I think I was like, I didn't get like, I, I didn't get any proper books. I got things like the guide to pogs and stuff like that. <laughs> just, just that's legit. I, I got, I got novels, but <laughs> yeah. So I, um, one of the books I read through this system was uh, Wolverine, Top Secret, by Francine Hughes, which was a great X-Men spin-off book, which filled in lots of blanks about Wolverine's past. And it turns out it had an impact on more than a few young fans, not just me, um, because I, I looked it up on, on Amazon just to see if it was available. And uh, one Amazon order review said, when I was younger, this was my favourite book, but it was stolen from me. It's so great to have it again. Who stole? Who stole this guy's copy of Wolverine Top Secret? His book was stole. <laughs> You've got a good memory. Now, I don't remember any of the books I would have picked. 
back then. I only re- I think I, I only I only remember that one, and and the demon headmaster. Um, Did you steal it? Are you the guy, the kid that stole it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just making up this whole backstory about the the pamphlet and the book club. Really, book? This 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 sounds unlikely. Yeah, no, I just stole it from from this other guy. But it was it was a great book. I mean, it's nothing to do with Demon Head Master. It's uh, a huge yeah. sidebar. But but um, Wolverine Top Secret. It was it was. Well, I, I found out as well doing research. It was uh, the first of a two part uh, portrait of Wolverine describing his early days in the Weapon X program before <laughs> Professor X recruits him as a member of the X Men team. And there's a like it was one, literally one of my favorite books as a kid. And it turns out there's a sequel that I never knew about. And I only found out about researching this episode, Wolverine, Duty and Honor. And it's on Amazon. So that is an instant, instant get purchase. Oh, okay. I've, I've, I've already got it. Like, it's already on the way. Um, <laughs> anyway, we're talking about the headmaster I, or just... Uh... Well, no, well, the, but then I felt I was... Uh, this is what happened when I tried to research this episode. I fell down a, a rabbit hole. I was like, this is, I'm supposed to be looking up, you know, looking into the demon headmaster. But then I, I looked into the author of Wolverine Top Secret, Francine Hughes. And it's fascinating because she, she made her career writing entirely these types of books. So she wrote um, more X-Men books. She wrote Gambit and the Shadow King and Havoc, A Secret of Cyclops' Brother. Uh, she also wrote the Power Rangers spin-off books, Alpha the Hero and Putty Attack, <laughs> uh, uh, Gargoyles, Demona's Revenge, and last but not least, the official novelization of the 1994 Flintstones movie. Ah, uh, okay. Well, someone had to write it, so it might as well. <laughs> that yeah. is, did they? Did they? But I would, I, Francine Hughes, if you're listening, I think you would make for a fascinating interviewee. I yeah. would love to have you on the podcast. <laughs> anyway. anyway. Another of the books I ordered from this book club pamphlet thing was The Demon Headmaster, which was uh, first published, actually, in 1982. Um, and, and the cover on the version I had uh, featured the Demon Headmaster kind of glowering. He was bending a ruler in, mm. in sinister fashion. And uh, he was, put, because there was artwork on the cover depicting the Demon Headmaster, and he was portrayed as a balding man with a mustache and in this artwork, he is a dead ringer on this cover for John Paul Larkin, better known as Scatman John of 1995 <laughs> hit Scatman <laughs> Now, I've, I've, made made little, yeah. I've, well, I've, I've made a little side by side for you, Tom, which I'll, okay. I'll send to you now. Amazing. Wow. He does look like Scatman John. Looks like... <laughs> Uncanny. Wow. For a minute, I wasn't sure which one was which, but uh, yeah. <laughs> well, but of course, it, it's not it's not John, because the scat man was not a headmaster, though he was a professor. <laughs> he heard you all ask about the meaning of scat. Well, he's the professor and all he can tell you is why you're still sleeping, the saints are still weeping. Some things you call dead haven't yet had the chance to be born. He's the scat man. <laughs> Now, for anyone, for anyone who doesn't remember Scatman John, um, that wouldn't make any sense to you. <laughs> I just think I've, I've, I've totally lost it, which, to a certain extent, I have. I've been, I've been shut away for a long time. Like, he was I've a, gone mad. He was, um, I assume, an American singer who specialised in scat singing, and he put it to a funk dance beat um, <laughs> and uh, had a massive hit single. And then his follow-ups, Scatman's World as well. Don't, don't forget that. Are, are you reading this, or do you just... No, that? remember Scatman's World, yeah. That- that's, that's impressive. Yeah. That was also the name of his debut album. There you go. Um, so welcome to the Scatman podcast. Uh, <laughs> Wolverine, Scatman, everything but the Demon Head Master. No. So so I, I must have read, um, to, to have made that, that association, I must have read the Demon Head Master for the first time at around the time of Scatman. Scatman, he got butter up. Um, so, so it would have been around 95, 96. So I would have been about nine or 10, which is like, yeah. I'd say like the perfect age to read uh, read that book because it's, um, it is a kid's book, but it's, um, you know, it's got some, some sinister themes. It's, it's, it's a little scary. So that's, that's, the, that's a great age to be reading it. Um, and the timing also couldn't have been better because even though uh, the book originally came out in the 80s, the Demon Headmaster television series, based on these uh, series of books by Gillian Cross, launched on CBBC on the 2nd of January, 1996. And once I'd gotten over my initial disapproval, of the fact that the, the TV's <laughs> Demon Headmaster did not resemble the great John Larkin. That's I was hooked. That sounds I was like hooked. Yeah. <laughs> you joke. Even, even even at age ten, I was like, hmm. Was it, was it not not, like not my book? Demon Headmaster. Not, hashtag not my Demon Headmaster. Uh. So the Demon Headmaster was uh, Gillian Cross's sixth book, and it was published when she was thirty-seven. So the good news, Tom, is that still there's still time. time for us. To- 
Okay. Still time for us to write a generation defining children's novel okay. that spins off into an equally iconic TV series. Plenty of time, plenty of time for us to accomplish all kinds of things. Um, so you were saying you didn't really know much about, about the character no. um, and his, his, the title character and his backstory. I mean, he's a, he's a demon headmaster. The clue is in the title. But I remember he, um, could, he could like, um, uh, like take over the mind of people, I assume. Because there was that, the, he, the intro was, was the, it would go into his eyes and it would get all wavy. And I assume that's how he took over. Correct. So, so he was a, a strange being with the powers of hypnosis and a desire to take over the world uh, because he believed it would be better under his ordered rule. He chose a, a random middle school in, in the UK to do this. Well, as, as we delve into the Demon headmaster, Headmaster's various schemes and plots, you'll see exactly why he chose... It wasn't, and he, wasn't, he only started out in a school. That was but, but one of his plots. Oh, OK. All right. And then he, he later moved on to, to bigger and better things. <laughs> But it was never established uh, who the demon headmaster was, where he came from, or how he got his powers. Um, is he human? Who knows? Um, but he can turn almost anyone into a hypnotic state by having them look into his eyes, except for a few people who appear to have a natural immunity to his abilities. Uh, but very little about the demon headmaster or his background is revealed in the books, as I was saying. Um, his name, his real name, is never revealed. He's referred to only as the headmaster. Uh, both in the books and on television, except when he takes on an alias. And every time he takes on an alias, it's always a title, never a name. Okay, I was going to say, how, how would he have got through the interview process? Because surely they would have had to have had a name. <laughs> uh, what's your name, sir? Oh, uh, it's the, the headmaster. It's a bit presumptuous. I haven't got the job yet. <laughs> also, you've learned how to say presumptuous, uh, <laughs> which is... <laughs> nice little callback there for, for, for the real hardcore. Yeah. Two beers if program. you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, heroine of the Demon Headmaster series Dinah. was uh, correct. I remember yes. that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Pull that out. Yeah, uh, yeah. Dinah Glass, later Dinah Hunter. Uh, she was a gifted young girl who, um, at the start of the series, the book series and the television series, moved in with a new foster family, the Hunters, uh, and started to attend a new school. But soon, Dinah finds herself like much of the school, under the spell of the sinister headmaster. And she teams up with her foster brothers, Lloyd and Harvey, and their friends who have formed the group Splat, Society for the Protection of Our Lives Against Them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of those ones where you go, Splat, what does that, what does that, what does that stand for? It's like, spe- it's like Spectre. Special, special executive for counterintelligence, terrorism, revenge and extortion. <laughs> special. You can't just have SP. Special. It doesn't work. Anyway. Um... So the book, uh, the first book in the series, which she splat to foil the headmaster's plot uh, to hypnotise the entire country through a broadcast of the Eddie Hare television show, uh, was a. Who's Eddie Hare? He's just a just a TV host, and he he was hosting a, a TV show at the school, and the headmaster mm. planned to use this broadcast to hypnotise the entire nation, um, and and that book was uh, adapted to become the first half, so the first three episodes of the television adaptation's first series. Uh, and I think I think we've left it long enough. Yeah. Well, you know, we're 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 past the ten minute mark. People are saying, "When are you going to play the su- the spooky, superb Demon Headmaster opening theme?" Right now, I'm going to play it right now. Good. The Demon Headmaster theme uh, was composed by Richard Attry, who also composed the music for the Martin Freeman sitcom Hardware. Uh, uh, that's it, I think. Yeah. There you go. Underrated, classic, underrated sitcom. Classic sitcom theme as well. Uh, you, you're Martin, enjoying that. We've got Martin Freeman and Peter Sarafanowitz in a sitcom. What more do you want? Some good jokes. Um, <laughs> but you were you were, you were enjoying there uh, watching back the title sequence. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I was just saying. I remembered instantly. I haven't seen these faces probably since it was on. And in the title sequence, you see all the the, the splat gang um, reacting to I assume the demon headmaster. And there's this one like 
ginger kid Lloyd Lloyd who um he looks far older than he is like facially he looks like he's had a really tough paper round and then he got who's the little kid with the bowl haircut uh I think I think that's the blonde hair yeah that's Harvey that's that's Dinah's right. other foster okay brother. yeah because he yeah I feel like he he was pun- punching above his weight in terms of his friendship group put it that way <laughs> having insulted some children uh, <laughs> so I was a kid at the on. time as well so it's fine <laughs> oh, right, so, oh so those were your opinions at the time yeah Obviously, I'm just bringing them back now you wouldn't be you wouldn't be so, so mean picking to on children, children now no but also they're not children now so I, I, I don't know is, it, is that okay so the, the demon headmaster I think at the time as you were saying it, it felt like appointment to view television for kids it, fe- it felt like a like a phenomenon um, and, and it was, but it actually ran for just three series um, and only 19 episodes hey, total. Let's 19. Go. Yeah. You could binge watch that in a weekend. Yeah. Um, it, it aired originally between the 2nd of January, 1996, and the 22nd of January, 1998. Uh, all episodes were directed by Roger Singleton Turner, and it was adapted for television by uh, writer Helen Cresswell, who again, had a very interesting career. She adapted many famous children's novels for the screen, uh, including Lizzie Dripping, Moondial, Five Children and It, the original, oh, and The Famous Five. Nice. But what, what a great gig to be like, yeah, yeah I'm the person who ad- adapts uh, classic kids' no- novels for television. <laughs> nice gig if you can get it. Um, <laughs> Demon Air Matter was, was filmed in London uh, with school location scenes for the first series being filmed at Hatch End High School in Hatch End Harrow, northwest London, which counts Philip Glenister. Hmm. among its alumni there you go um the first series contained six episodes uh and it aired twice weekly from uh the 2nd to the 18th of january 1996 uh as i said the first three episodes were adapted from the first book and then the second three were adapted from Gillian cross's 1985 follow-up book the prime minister's brain <laughs> <laughs> which sounds like a carl pilkington movie yeah, it idea does, it does <laughs> <laughs> but that was uh, was the second book in the Demon Head Master series, uh, and in this book, uh, a national computer competition for kids. Uh, so you're right; they were computer whiz kids. Yeah, uh, this is what really... I remember. I feel like for some reason yeah. I might have tuned in to part two more than part one. And 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 uh, in this this national computer competition is revealed to be a front, uh, so that the Demon Head Master can hack into the Prime Minister's computer, his brain, and hypnotize the Prime Minister. So he's already he's he's kind of up in his game now. Um, although I think. Compared to some current world leaders, having the demon head master in charge doesn't seem like so bad an option. No, I mean, yeah, he likes he likes order. Not a fan of chaos. <laughs> Doing a little bit, a little bit of that right now. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the cast. So uh, TV newcomer Francis Amy mm. uh, played Dinah Glass slash Hunter. Uh, wh- where is she now, Tom? Well, yeah, it turns out I wrote a Where Are They Now piece uh, in my old job years and years ago, and it's, I'm just looking it up now. So this is accurate as of 2016. So uh, isn't she isn't she a dentist or she, she is, was a dentist? She is a dentist. It says she's also had time to graduate with a degree in dentistry from Newcastle University in 2009. Um, she has appeared in a number of short films and plays as well. Um, but yeah, there you go. I, I I think I think I've looked her up on Twitter, and I think she's no longer a dentist. Okay, so she's she's an ex actor, ex dentist. Francis, if if you're listening, get get in touch. Podcast at twogeeks2beers dot com. Two Geeks Cast on all the social channels. We'd love we'd love to hear what you're up to now. Uh, come on, we'll we'll, we'll you know we we'll have a chat about the Demon Head Master. It'd be great. So uh, the the show that's that's two interview requests I've put out just in the space of a few minutes. So um, the show. You couldn't remember his name earlier. How how dare you? So the great Terence Hardiman That's played the, the demon headmaster. Uh, Hardiman was a respected character actor known for playing, fittingly enough, authoritarian figures, including uh, Luftwaffe police major Reinhardt in the 1970s BBC drama series Secret Army, which uh, is apparently like hello, hello without the laughs. <laughs> uh, it was uh, producer director Roger Singleton Turner who originally approached Hardiman about playing the sinister schoolmaster. Uh, Hardiman said, "I thought, what a horrible character! How lovely! A real villain of a real villain of a piece. Why not?" Your left arm is completely numb. You can feel nothing. Oh yes, I can! I can! I can! As I thought, pretending. Look at me when I'm speaking to you. Look at me. 
I see that you are not yet accustomed to our ways. I hope that you are not going to be a person who will not cooperate. Look at me. I know what you want, Dinah. Trust me. You want to go to sleep because you are tired. So tired. Those you eyes. Are sleepy. I can't. So sleepy. You will go to sleep and not remember anything no. that happened. No, remember it. I must remember. Sleep. Remember. Hypnotism. Sleep. I will remember. Hypnotism. Uh, apparently, Hardiman had no idea that the 90s series would go on to become the sensation that it did. Uh, watched in its droves by small children and big kids alike. He said, I started to be recognised in the street, especially as I lived near schools uh, in around here in northwest London. And there were people, youngsters, looking at me and shouting at me and making fun of me, which is very healthy. It stopped me being too grand. But then, he said, the slightly more remarkable thing I found was it wasn't just children who were watching, it was parents and other people too. Um, and apparently one time, uh, a shop assistant in Sainsbury's came up to him when he was just sort of you know, pottering around doing, doing his, his, uh, his shop. And she said, you're the demon headmaster, aren't you? And I said, yes, I am. She said, I don't let my boy watch that. He said, why not? She said, it's too scary. I thought, but you watch it. How, how do you know? What do you, what, what do, you do with your child? <laughs> Terence said, I didn't ask these questions, but it made me think, what happens to the boy? Is he told to go off to the kitchen and make her a cup of tea while she watches the demon headmaster? So many questions. <laughs> um, not saying anything like that happened in real life, but mm. did you ever have a teacher that went a bit too far off of their discipline or anything like that? Oh, yeah, we had a teacher who used to throw board rubbers at, um, at bad kids. <laughs> There was also there was also the legend of a teacher who dangled a kid out of a, a, a third story window, <laughs> but that that may well have just been, you know, you're just, re- you're just remembering Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, wait. Yeah, that is Die Hard. Yeah. I had no. I had a teacher. Uh, one, I won't say his name, but it was one teacher that was like my favorite teacher. He was great. Uh, it was always my favorite. And then there was obviously just one. He was he was quite a young teacher. He must have probably been about our age at the time, and he was obviously just having a really bad day. And he um, got really angry one day and he got my ruler and snapped it in half and chucked it in, in the in the bin. And I remember at the time, even him going, and he could say, you could tell he was going, ah, shit, shit, shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have done that. I remember that so so is, this, is this the guy you're comparing to the demon headmaster? Someone, <laughs> someone who, this guy's like a, like, like a psychopathic megalomaniac villain with yeah, the powers of yeah. hypnosis and mind control. And this guy broke your ruler. <laughs> Look, it was, it was a nice ruler, all right? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. Terence, if you heard about the guy who broke the ruler, he'd be like, "What a villain! Can't wait to play that character." But I like. I like that there's all these these legends of these incidents that happens at school that no one was actually witness to. It's just this kind of. Oh, is fun. that is that a legendary incident? Is it like you've you've long left the school? But you go, no, not did you that. About, did you, you remember the time that Tom Eames' ruler got snapped? No, what you said with your one, the yeah, dang out the window. But I like that. Yeah, I'm sure there was one in my school where this kid apparently held up a. You know, like you go those um, you know those those what are those knives called that you got in like woodwork that was like a you you'd flick it up like yeah, that. Yeah, like a little That's... kind of almost like a scalpel. I know, it, I know the ones. Yeah, called. that kind of thing. And I, the, 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 he'd sort of put the knife up to to the teacher as a because he was a, what is one of those tearaway kids that shouldn't have been in school in the first place. And it was, you know, and yeah, but again, no no one was actually there to see it. It was just this this like amazing story that went that was I mean, I mean, I I would have I would have opened with that. Rather than <laughs> the ruler incident, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So me, it was a big deal. I'm sure it was traumatic. So yeah. um, joining uh, Francis and and, and Terence in in the series were uh, Gunnar Cole uh, three, great, great name as Lloyd. He was Lloyd. Um, Thomas Zacharis as Harvey Hunter, uh, and Anthony Cumber, Christy Bruce, and Rachel Goodyear as Splat members Ian, Ingrid, and Mandy. Uh, the series also starred Katie Crawford Caston as Rose Carter, who was a, a vicious school prefect who served the headmaster. Now, remember that name, Rose Carter, because it, there's not going to be a, a, a quiz, but it will come up later on. Um, okay. And, and the series also starred Tessa Peake Jones as Mrs. Hunter, uh, Dinah's foster mother. Do you know who, who Tessa Peake Jones is? 
Yeah, um, Cassandra in... Um... Close, Raquel. The other one, Raquel. Yeah, you had, had a 50-50 shot. It was Raquel, <laughs> yeah. uh, Delvoy's missus from Only Fools and Horses. I meant Raquel. I was thinking Raquel. I, I was picturing Raquel, but I said Cassandra. You, be honest, you, were, yeah. still, you were still thinking about that ruler and you couldn't, you couldn't think straight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, notable guest stars in, uh, in the, the, the series uh, included, as TV host Eddie Hare, who we were talking about earlier, Danny John Jules. Nice. Didn't, and, I don't at all. I'll, I'll, I'll share with you now uh, an image of what Danny looked like in the Demon Headmaster. And I think it's fair to say even the cat would turn up his nose at that outfit. Wow, look at that. Looks like um, even Prince would go, all right, calm down. <laughs> uh, and also uh, Florence Hoth uh, played the child genius best uh, in the in the Prime Minister's Brain adaptation. And uh, Doctor Who fans will know her as Nancy in The Empty Child, The Doctor Dances. Uh, so the, the first series of the Demon Head Master television series adapted uh, the first two books, right? But the third Demon Head Master book, that was originally published in 1994 under the title Hunky Parker is Watching You uh, and was later re-released under the title The Revenge of the Demon Head Master. Uh, that makes a bit more sense. Yeah, but this was actually, <laughs> weirdly, my favourite book of, of the series, um, because it was about the Demon Head Master using subliminal messaging in hidden frames of a TV show uh, to hypnotise people. So it was educational, first time I'd heard about <laughs> subliminal frames. Um, but this book, the third book, was never adapted for television. Um, mm. Possibly because it involved the Demon Head Master posing as Hunky Parker, um, the star of this hit new TV show, uh, and so it would have involved Terence Hardiman dressing up as a giant pig. Um, so hang on, so he had to, so so he took over the the appearance of other people as well. He, no, he just he, no, he's literally just wearing a pig suit. Wearing a pig suit. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you not hear me say the bit where about dressing up as a giant pig? Yeah, but I thought you meant like he. It was like a, a Mr. Ed situation where it was like an actual pig. <laughs> he couldn't. No, he, he doesn't have shape changing abilities. He did not turn. Oh, in, okay. He did not right. turn into okay. an actual pig. It was just like it was like a kid's yeah. a kid's you know character in a pig okay. outfit, hunky Parker, like big, like big Bird. Right. Exactly. Like imagine the Demon Head Master. Imagine Terence Hardiman dressed as Big Bird, <laughs> but every so often a little flash will come up, being like, "Do whatever Demon Head Master says." That's that's basically the. the when you say Hunky Parker, I yeah. thought it was going to be some sort of, you know, heartthrob, young dude, and I thought, well, so it, it, was it like an anthology series where each series would be a new thing that the being, whether it was, was overtaking a new person, but no, it's just the, the Demon Headmaster each time. It's just the de- it's just Demon Headmaster each time. Okay. It's this time that, wearing, makes, that makes more sense. Right. Yeah. Well, and but I've, I've shared with you now. Um, the book cover that I had for Revenge of the Demon Head Master. And that's, oh, wow, look at that. That's, yeah. hu- that's Hunky Parker. He's a terrifying, demon-like, pig-faced creature. Definitely not a heartthrob. Um, no. But that's, that's an odd... For, for Gillian Cross, that was an odd uh, tangent to go down. A weird flex from Cross. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, maybe that's why they, they swerved that on TV. So instead, from uh, Series 2 onwards... The books and the TV show were produced more or less in tandem because they kind of a bit of a Game of Thrones situation. They caught, yeah, up, they, caught up, they caught up with each other, but except Gillian Cross actually like made an effort and, and kept writing her books. Um, <laughs> she wasn't just like I'm going to make a cameo. No, write the books. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> which Gillian did? Thanks, uh, thanks, Gillian. Yeah, um, and the people and the people behind the TV series actually cared, and they came up with a good ending. I assume. Well, they worked. They worked with Gillian to to they create together to make a great thing, thing that she'd always that she'd always intended. Um, they didn't rush it just because they wanted to do Star Wars instead, and then lost the Star Wars game because their original thing was so shit. We we could we we could have been talking in like really vague terms, and then you just like, got <laughs> you got real specific there. Um, <laughs> so from from now on, the books and the TV shows, the Demon Head Master were kind of produced in tandem. So both the fourth book and series two. Um, are titled The Demon Headmaster Strikes Again. Uh, and uh, they see the headmaster become director of a biogenetic research centre uh, where he attempts to meddle with evolution itself. And he also, uh, he also creates a clone of Dinah called Eve with a lizard tongue. How can you meddle with evolution? He's a, he has a machine. 
Oh, so what? You go back in time and and fix it to. <laughs> No, he like not not past e- like e- not past evolution, like future evolution. Evolution hasn't stopped, Tom. No, but you you can't really do anything now. It's very gradual. Do you know what I mean? It's always gradual. It's evolution. Yeah, but yeah, but like you can't change it now when it affects. You'd have to. Well, you can because he's he's. I'm, he's, sure he's got, I'm sure he's got a machine that does it. So. He's meddling. That's the whole point. He's meddling with it. Like he's meddling with the natural process. So anyway, here's a clip. This is my evolution accelerator. I can speed up or slow down evolution as I wish. Just like the creeper. Precisely. And the wasp. You are so clever, I'm surprised you did not realize earlier. We didn't realize because it's impossible. Nothing is impossible, as you will see. I developed that creature, and I can reproduce her in her thousands. Millions. I merely need to adjust my timing. She outwitted you, Dinah Hunter. She had Di's face. Of course. And she had her intelligence. What she did not have, which made her immeasurably superior, is feelings. She was as cold as a lizard. He's mad. And she was programmed, of course, to obey my orders. Like me. I have no further time to waste. I shall now switch on the evolution accelerator. What has just happened to Eve is merely a minor matter of timing. A few small adjustments, and I can replicate Eve in her hundreds, thousands. And one by one, you will speed through your life cycle and become dust. I have... The future of mankind in the palm of my hand. Oh, brave new world! It's uh, it's been a while since I, I saw that particular series. I can't actually remember why the Demon Headmaster creating a lizard clone of Dinah and a, a creeper creature. How that helped restore order to society. But I'm, I'm sure he had a very good scheme. In I feel place. like he's obviously he's obviously a very bright man in some respects, but he's he's not he's also not the brightest spark at all, really, is he? I mean, he's I don't know. He just seems to the, the ideas he's coming up with just seem a bit like a bit complicated. Like I'm sure you could have just I don't know. It's why don't you just take over the mind of the president and and I don't know, much easier done. He he did try to to hypnotize the prime minister. In fairness, he just did it through a really. Uh, complex Just scheme of, of o- over the top way, yeah. Just... Staging, yeah, staging a, a, a computer programming. System. So, so his, so his second or third attempt to take over the world was via a weird pig creature thing, not well, a lizard. Sorry. In in book canon, no, well, in yeah, book li- canon, he dressed up as a pig. Yeah, and <laughs> in, then... in in TV canon, he created a weird lizard, lizard creature. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So there was a gap of just eight months um, between series one and series two of the Demon Head Master. They were really. Um, knocking mm. them out and the second series uh was based on just the one book uh just the one plot as opposed to the kind of divide of the first series uh it contained seven episodes and it aired weekly from the 25th of september to the 6th of november 1996 and it introduced the character of diner's foster father mr hunter uh played by david lloyd does that name ring any bells for you david lloyd no There's not a, on fire. there is a danny john jules connection actually I don't know, was it? He was, was best it Maid Marion. Correct. He was best known for his role in Maid Marion and Her Merry Men, another vintage CBBC series, where he played Graham, one of the two guards, uh, yeah. alongside Mark <laughs> Billingham's yeah. Gary. Yeah, no, I do remember them. Underage. We should do an episode of Maid Marion, actually. That'd be well up for us. We, we may well do. We, we've talked about um, a Robin Hood episode, yeah, yeah. but maybe we should just give Maid Marion a solo outing. I think we should. Um... But then, so they they knocked out Series 2 pretty fast, but then there was a gap of 14 months over a year between Series 2 and 3. When when you're like 9, 10, 11, that's like... You could be too old for it by then. I do do, do seem to remember. I definitely watched it all, but I do feel like um, the the craze had had passed slightly in that time. Like, that's a, you know, that's that's ages for a kid. Um, (laughs) Although... Having said that, bridging the gap for fans was The Demon Headmaster Takes Over TV, which was a CBBC pantomime aired on Christmas Day, uh, 1997. Uh, <laughs> according to Wikipedia, the special was only shown once and has never been repeated. 
<laughs> so I don't know. That might just be. Did it, it might, even exist? Did it, it even happen? It might. Well, yeah. It could. It could just be an urban legend. I think it did exist. I think you know, presumably it's never been repeated or released because of rights issues rather than because it was a load of toss. But it was. <laughs> um. It was written. Christmas apparently. Day. Christmas Day. It was part of the Christmas. I mean, people complain about Christmas Day schedules now, but it was. Um. It was written by uh, CBBC presenter Chris Jarvis. You remember Chris Jarvis? Oh, yeah. I yeah. remember Chris Yanarak. Yeah, yeah. very good. Uh, and yeah. interestingly, he also appeared in the third series of The Demon Headmaster as a game show host. Huh. There you yeah. go. Um, mm. So the third and final series of The Demon Headmaster um, contained six episodes. Again, it was a single storyline. And it aired, uh, like the first series, twice weekly from the 6th to the 22nd of January 1998 and it's a tv version of the fifth demon headmaster novel the demon headmaster takes over in which that headmaster develops and see what you think of this plot he develops the hyper brain a, com- <laughs> a computer with superhuman intelligence and the potential to control all information in the world obsessed with the brain <laughs> insane in the main brain professor yes what is it I don't think I... What do you want? Knowledge. Don't we all? What exactly do you want to know? Everything. Oh. Oh, dear. So this will annoy you. Uh, the, the series ended on a cliffhanger. Oh, no. Why? The headmaster was left comatose after Splat disrupted his plans to download all information ever into his brain or something. Um, and, and this is how the final moments of the Demon Headmaster, the original series at least, played out. Can I just point out that the, the professor that he was just talking to mm. uh, was the bloke that Poldark could always get money off. <laughs> I reckon I, I know I recognised him. Yeah. Yeah, every, yeah. Every, like pretty much every episode of Poldark. Uh, would involve Ross Poldark visiting this guy, his banker, and be saying, "I require capital for real leisure." Ah, uh, his life was so hard. Ross Poldark, Rich, Richard Hope is the a very, uh, a very busy character actor for many years. But Richard yeah, Hope, little, little shout out to Richard Hope. Though. Yeah, we're not always we're, we're not always horrible about <laughs> respected character actors. Sometimes we just give them a lovely shout out. Um, <laughs> Give us bangers, give us five. I'm the hungriest kid alive. Lay off it, Ingrid. Joke's over. I like talking in rhyme. I might do it forever. Spare us. Certainly saved our bacon, eh, Claudia? Nonsense rules, okay. (laughs) I've just had the weirdest conversation with Bill on the phone. Oh, at least we've got a phone now. He couldn't take in a single thing I had to tell him. One of you will have to explain. (laughs) The curse of the lady. I'm not sure I can work it out myself. He says he's got a black hole where the last few days should be. Well, you might have to research that, Tim. Well, what about the creeper? Are we going to... Fear not. It's back to the creeper for you and me. Ah, the creeper! Funky! Well, I'm going back to the internet. I'm Terminator. I'm Werewolf. Ow, ow, ow! And I'm Robot. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Lloyd? What? Oh. The Demon Headmaster. He's alive, and he potentially has all information ever in his brain. <laughs> um, you were pointing out there that they, they maybe ended the series at the right time, even though it was frustrating it ended on a cliffhanger, because Lloyd was clearly not even going through, had gone through puberty at that, at that point. It always freaks me out when you watch um, kids in TV series, and at one moment they're kids, and then they sort of... When, yeah, when you go through puberty, you sort of go through that weird period, and they just... Don't look right. They need to. They need to stop the show. Where it is, Lloyd at that point looks like um, you know, Donny Most in in as Ralph Mouth and Happy Days. <laughs> yeah, and his and his voice has has dropped several octaves. Uh, yeah. from, from where it was in uh, the first series. But I, I I remember that ending. That um, I I I was I wasn't even certain one hundred percent when I started researching this episode that I had seen the show all the way through. But then I remember that that final scene of of Lloyd saying. I'm the demon headmaster and taking off the glasses and yeah. waking up. And I was like, ah, that is, I think I finally know Tom after all this time, what it means when something has bitten into your history. I think, <laughs> finally. I think I could finally, finally, 
<laughs> I finally got there. It took us 68 episodes, but I got there. Uh, so the Demon Headmaster did end in 1998. Uh, but it uh, it was pretty acclaimed at the time. Uh, in 1997, it was nominated for Best Drama at the BAFTA Children's Awards, um, along with The Queen's Nose, another like CBBC classic. Yeah, classic. Um, but it but it lost out to The Ward, uh, formerly known as Children's Ward, which, to be fair, uh, did, have, did have Russell T Davies on the right exam. So. Yeah, but no one liked that. No one liked Children's Ward. <laughs> uh, but The Demon Headmaster continues to be well-remembered. Uh, by fans, with the very mention of its name, sending a pleasant chill down the spine. Uh, it yeah. was uh, all briefly available on iPlayer, uh, I think, to tie in with the, the launch of the reboot. They put the original back on iPlayer. It's not there anymore, but the complete original series is available on DVD. What about BritBox? It's not on BritBox yet. That's, what, that's what BritBox should be about. It should have everything on it. That's another question. <laughs> Every, it's, got, it's got Press Gang. It's pretty good. Um, <laughs> so, interestingly... In uh, 2002, which is four years after the TV series ended, uh, Gillian Cross did publish one more Demon Headmaster book, uh, Facing the Demon Headmaster, which again, obviously, was was not adapted for television, one of only two that wasn't. In this book, the new obsession for kids is the masked DJ Pardo Man, also known as DJ P, who... Oh, no. It's, it's a long story, but basically the headmaster's behind it all and he plans to hypnotise some people. That, that's kind of what you say. But actually, this book is strangely topical to what we're all going through at the moment or what we went through a little while ago because DJ Pardaman uh, apparently instructs clubbers to bring certain food items uh, to gain entry to his club on different club nights, uh, which causes uh, food shortages of certain items uh, across the country, which is all somehow part of the demon headmaster's evil scheme. I said, again, a very elaborate scheme, very over elaborate, but all right. Uh, there were also uh, three Demon Headmaster short stories written by Gillian Cross, which formed part of the canon. Uh, crash Landing, which sees the Headmaster crash his getaway helicopter in a small village after the events of the Prime Minister's brain. Uh, carnival and maths homework. But <laughs> <laughs> not, not, the mo- not the most dynamic. The scariest of all. <laughs> hey. Matt, so it could be, could be pretty pretty unsettling. But after facing the Demon Headmaster, uh, Gillian Cross didn't write another Demon Headmaster book for 15 years until 2017, uh, when she returned to the franchise with a new book, Total Control. Amazing. Uh, and she said, I, I really don't think one should write books with messages, but schools are so different now from how they used to be that I got excited about the Demon Headmaster being back in a school. Uh, and in this new book, the headmaster is now head of Hazelbrook Academy, where every student is a star. Uh, and he plans to, again, hypnotise the prime minister when he pays a visit to the school. Uh, and Gillian Cross said, since I wrote the first books, education has become so politicised uh, to such an extent that it doesn't seem at all bizarre that the prime minister should be invited to view what looks like the model of the perfect school. And this book, uh, Total Control, which uh, features a new cast of young characters, going up against the headmaster, served as the inspiration for CBBC's new reboot, uh, which was first broadcast on the 14th of October 2019 and saw Nicholas Gleaves play the demon headmaster. Welcome to the new Hazelbrook Academy, where every student is a star. Look into my eyes and you will see a bunch of unruly kids Spell her. who now listen to me. Everyone's welcome at Hazelbrook. Hey! So look into my eyes. Yes! Resistance will only bring pain. Brand new The Demon Headmaster starts Monday at 5 on CBBC. Look into my eyes. You know what? I have absolutely no idea that happened. You're not alone. A lot of people were... I don't think this reboot was particularly well publicised or promoted. Mm. Um, it's a shame because it was great. Um, and I love, I love the fact that this... Type we we often complain. We say like the types of shows we used to watch don't get made like the Demon Headmaster don't get made anymore. They literally yeah. made the Demon Headmaster again. Um, no, yeah. yeah. So uh, the show had a new theme tune uh, by Philip Curran, but it contained hints of the original if you listen closely.
so the original is obviously iconic, but you hear little strains of the the original yeah, there. Nice. Um, yeah, nice. Nice modern new stranger Stranger Things almost. I yeah, think. little Stranger Things vibe. It does miss though the terrified little chubby kids. I do miss. The, I do. I do miss the little chubby kids who are scared. Um, now, you say, Tom, you didn't really know that this reboot even happened. You don't know much about it. I guarantee you will like this. Okay. So, despite originally being promoted as a reboot, it is revealed during the course of the series that this new Demon Head Master show is actually a sequel to the '90s original. Yes. <laughs> Does it sound back? Well, just wait. So, in a twist, not in the books. Uh, new protagonist Lizzie Warren is revealed in a mid-series twist to be the daughter of Rose Carter, who was the Amazing. the hypnotized prefect. Rose is now going by the name Mary Warren, having adopted her middle name Mary and later having married, so changed her surname. An adult Dinah also returns. Yes. Now working for MI6, and she aids our new young heroes in battling the headmaster. Incredible. Fantastic. Like, like this, like who, like. Yeah, I don't I'm, know who it's for. I don't know who they're making it for. <laughs> I'm sure the target audience enjoyed it, but this is also like pure nerd manna from heaven for the yeah, life of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, Dinah was recast. Um, oh. Charlotte Beckett took on the role instead of Frances Amy um, because, you know, she's busy being a, a, a dentist or whatever she's up to now. Uh, yeah. Emma Reeves, who was the showrunner, on the new reboot, she or revival, she told Sci-Fi Bulletin, "We did make inquiries about Francis Amy's availability, but sadly, we were told that she was no longer acting." So they did, they did try, uh, they did try. That's good. So in the final episode of uh, the revival of the revival's first series, Nicholas Gleaves' headmaster is revealed to be one of many clones created by the original, and Terence Hardiman reprises his role of the original headmaster in the final scenes. Yes, good. How much of this nonsense has been broadcast? It may not be too late. But it is. Much too late. The damage has been done. Dinah Hunter has contacted her colleagues at MI6 and they are on their way. This operation has failed. Not yet. The situation can be managed. The damage controlled. The security services must not gain access to our technology or our private information. We must activate our emergency exit strategy. That would be inefficient. Creating this body took considerable time and energy. There can be no dissent. Look into my eyes. You are feeling sleepy. You are under my control. My control, my control, my control, my control. Whoa, what is happening? This headmaster just hypnotized that headmaster. Emergency protocol must evacuate. Not you. That body is known and compromised. It must be destroyed. He's going to kill him. Activate the explosive device. Begin countdown. I mean, so good. The moment when he reappears and the music goes, da, na, na. it's like, yes. Was he, uh, was he a bit like, you know, like Jim Bowen, who um, at the time he, he'd always looked old, even though he probably wasn't, or like Clive Dunn in Dad's Army, where, because he looks exactly the same there, and he must be now in his what, 80s? 80s, yeah. He must have been only like in his 50s at the time when he looked like he was in his 70s back then. So I hope you're listening, Terence. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you've always looked old. Um, so <laughs> you looked old then, now, Jesus Christ. Um, so, I was like, he looks great. He looks great. <laughs> he looks great, is what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so Hardiman um, had apparently kept his original glasses. Uh, he said, it sounds as if I stole them, but I didn't. I was asked by the wardrobe department, look after them. You may need them again. Amazing. So I did. I appeared on various children's morning programs where they wanted me to come on as a guest and be the demon headmaster. And then the glasses kind of got put away in a drawer and were only brought out for this reboot. I took them back in and used them again. Strange. It was like bringing out an old <laughs> friend. <laughs> so the demon headmaster reboot was warmly received by fans of the original. Uh, the showrunner, Emma Reeves, she told <coughs> RadioTimes.com that uh, she and her writing team had actually uh, pitched a second series of The Demon Headmaster 
to CBBC, uh, one which she said would continue to use some elements from the book Total Control, um, adapt parts of Gillian Cross's latest Demon Headmaster book, which is 2019's Mortal Danger, and potentially take the show into totally fresh and uncharted territory too. Uh, she said, we're very much thinking, what happens to these characters next? And taking some elements of Mortal Danger and also just seeing what else might happen. But as of yet, it has still not been announced if there will be a second series of the Demon Headmaster revival, but the first series is still all available on iPlayer. And if you're a fan of the original, uh, you know, like Tom, you remember it from your childhood, you're, you're listening back to this episode, I would, I would really recommend going and checking out the revival uh, on iPlayer. Great spooky fun for all ages. <laughs> um, do you think you think you'll check it out, Tom, having seen those, those snippets? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's weird because you watch it and go, clearly this isn't aimed at me, so I'm not going like, to enjoy it like it's Game of Thrones. But um, <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think you did enjoy Game of Thrones. Well, I did until the last the last five episodes. But um, yeah, I'll give it a go. Give it a good old go. Yeah. I, I'd give it a go. I think I think you'll be pleasantly surprised though. So that is about it. Uh, head over to twogeeks2beers.com where you can find all 67 of our previous episodes. We promise this podcast is not just a cover for a long-winded scheme to hypnotise public figures in high-ranking positions of power, but then we would say that, wouldn't we? Mm, uh, we're also on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, anywhere you can get your podcasts. You can get two geeks. Subscribe, rate, review. Do it. You will obey my instructions. Jesus. <laughs> Uh, and we're on all the social channels so please do follow us at 2 Geekscast, uh, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram it's always lovely to hear from you so please do drop us a line on there yeah you can also find clips from episodes old and new on our YouTube channel if you just put 2 Geeks 2 Beers into YouTube you'll find us you can send a friend a little sampler of one of your favourite 2 Geeks moments and uh, head over to Patreon slash 2 Geekscast and well Patreon.com slash 2 Geekscast should I say um, and you'll find some extra goodies from there if you um, give us a little bit of a little bit of dosh. Uh, you get like um, proper special episodes dedicated to your uh, precise request and lots of other things as well. We always nail the sales pitch. Um, oh, yeah, you, can, always, yeah. you can also email us uh, podcast at two geeks two beers dot com. Is there a series or film that traumatized you as a child? Like that bit in Superman three you know, with that woman where it turns her into a, a robot? You know that bit I mean? Never seen it, mate. But Karen, uh, hang on. I'll get. It's, it's, it's worth digging up. I'll get the clip. All right. All right. That was horrible. I wish you could have seen your face watching it. <laughs> really unsettled. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, if you were traumatised by Superman 3, uh, I'm sure you were if you've seen it. Uh, let us know. Podcast at twogeeks2beers.com. If you want free therapy, get in touch. So, to play us out, something a little different, uh, by Abandoned Rugs TV. You can track those guys down on YouTube. It's a piano cover of the original Demon Headmaster theme oh. that somehow manages to be even spookier and more melancholy than the original. So we'll leave you with that. And what else is there to say? Except I think the Headmaster is a marvellous man and this is the best show I've ever watched. <laughs> Get in touch for, yeah, yeah, yeah. get in touch for. I can't spell free. Yeah.
Sorry. It's going to be a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Get in touch with free... Th- I can't say free therapy. That's really hard. Get in touch with free... Th- th- no. Should I just... Free just- therapy. <laughs> Get in touch with... <laughs> Uh, get, get in touch with no i can't do it fuck it fuck it i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it we'll do it live <laughs> i'll do it <laughs> for for three four four free four free four free four free, four free F-F-T. therapy F-F-T. Yeah. <laughs> for f- why am i if you want if you want free therapy there we go yeah yeah. If you want... Fr- I can't, why can't I say free therapy? <laughs> you suddenly developed a speech impediment. Yeah. <laughs> if you want free therapy, get in touch. Hey. All right.